And joining me next is Joe Bast, president of the Heartland Institute, a think tank in Chicago, uh, to talk about the ongoing global warming wars. Welcome, Mr. Bast. Hi, thanks for having me on. So uh, please tell us how your organization uh, came to be at the center of this climate debate at re in, in, in recent weeks. It, it's a fascinating story. Uh, I think it's pretty fascinating, too. We've been doing work on climate change for the last 15 years. We've done conferences, books, videos. I mean, we have uh, just done a lot to try to put forward a, a science-based approach to global warming. Go ahead. Okay, I'm getting a lot of background noise. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah, yes. I was just... Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, and so then just uh, about uh, three weeks ago, um, somebody named Peter Gleick, as it turns out, um, impersonated a board member of the Heartland Institute, stole his identity by creating a fake email address, and proceeded to use that fake email address to steal uh, documents that were prepared for a board meeting, uh, he read those documents, concluded that there was no smoking gun in them, and then forged a two-page memo in order to make it look like we were conspiring to, to discourage teachers from teaching science in classrooms, uh, and in other ways doing this nefarious stuff, and then leaked all of those documents, or passed all those documents to his friends at Desmog Blog and Think Progress, the Huffington Post, and some of the other liberal websites. Um, okay. It, who, it was an amazing would, thing, and all the mainstream media then piled on, and for the last week you've seen literally thousands of articles and blog postings, uh, all quoting a forged memo claiming that the Heartland Institute had some sort of conspiracy on uh, uh, confusing people about global warming. Who is Gleick? Uh, do you, what do we know about his background, and why do you think your organization was singled out for this? Well, uh, Peter, Dr. Peter Gleick uh, is president of the Pacific Institute. It's a research organization based in Oakland, California. Uh, he's a member of the National Academy of Sciences. Uh, he's a MacArthur Fellow, and he's what we call in our shop a rooster, a uh, global warming rooster. He's one of the guys who goes around crowing about global warming, that it's the end of the world, that we're all going to die, and that we need to put more money into organizations like his and more into scientific research for his colleagues in the uh, climate science research community in order to stop it. Uh, he's very prominent and he's been uh, very loud and very hostile in his criticism of anyone who disagrees with him. Okay. What is the Heartland Institute's position on global warming? Uh, we believe that uh, climate has warmed uh, in the second half of the 20th century. Uh, we believe that there is probably a measurable human impact on climate, but it's probably very small. We think that natural forces probably overwhelm any impact that human activity can have, that computer models uh, are too unreliable to forecast what the future might hold for climate, and finally, that uh, a modest amount of warming is probably going to be on net beneficial both to human beings and to the ecosystem. We think that that's pretty much the, actually the consensus of working scientists in this area. Uh, most of the research that's been done on the topic find that computer models, for example, are very unreliable. Nobody believes that they can forecast what the temperatures are going to be 10 and 50 years from now. They have a terrible record of doing that. Um, okay. and, and, and so on. We, we've collected enormous amounts of research on this and we've published them repeatedly. We've held six international conferences. Over 3,000 people attended those conferences. So we've been trying to get the word out that there's real scientific debate taking place uh, and that most scientists aren't uh, on the alarmist end of things the way that Peter Gleick and his colleagues are. And, and what can you tell us about this program you are putting in place uh, to help uh, put out education materials for, um, for grade school children and high school children mm -hmm. regarding uh, climate, climate change? Yeah, the, uh, uh, our critics really latched on to that because the memo just flat out lies about what we're trying to accomplish there. Um, right now in K-12 schools, uh, climate change or global warming is being taught in many grade levels and it's very politicized, uh, it's very superficial. Um, you know, many kids get to watch uh, An Inconvenient Truth by Al Gore over and over again, and they pass that off as scientific instruction. It's not. It's just a propaganda film. What we want to do is bring real research and real science into the classroom, teach kids about critical thinking, um, let them understand that uh, to, to try to find the human fingerprint on climate is a big challenge, and it's an exciting quest. 
And if you want to become a scientist, it, there are opportunities for you to study climate and study heat transfers in the ocean and um, all these different things and not present it to them as just some sort of liberal narrative that, that starts with the science debate is over and there's nothing more to learn about it and ends with we all have to you know, surrender our rights in order to immediately save the planet from catastrophe. Okay. Do you see any, any parallels between what happened to your organization and these uh, East Anglia emails that were discovered a little while back on global warming where the climate yeah. scientists were uh, talked about the, sort of deceiving the public because the data didn't say what um, <laughs> they wanted it to say? I think there is a parallel. Um, I think uh, ClimateGate uh, was a huge blow to the credibility of that small group of very politicized scientists who have tried to claim that the debate is over, uh, that we all know that global warming is a crisis and we need to do something about it. The uh, ClimateGate emails revealed that these scientists were conspiring to limit debate. They were trying to shut down uh, scientists who were publishing articles in peer-reviewed journals that disagreed with their findings. They were um, stonewalling against uh, uh, FOIA requests. They were destroying data. Um, that was a crisis moment in the global warming community. Um, I think what happened to us is another crisis moment in the global warming community. We call it fake gate uh, <laughs> after faked documents. Uh, we think that this event, uh, very similar to climate gate, documented um, how desperate these scientists are how they're willing to stoop to very low levels in order to advance their agenda, how they're not really interested in debate at all. They're interested in shutting down debate, shutting down organizations like the Heartland Institute that take a different point of view. Now, it's been pointed out that maybe we're hypocritical uh, to complain that documents were stolen from us, and yet we quoted the documents that were taken from the scientists in the uh, climate gate event. I think it's very different. The Heartland Institute is a private organization. We're not a public organization. We're not uh, subject to FOIA requests. Okay. The documents that were taken from us don't show any scheming, any kind of dishonest transactions, any attempt to suppress debate. Just the opposite. It, it's an open plan that we write about all the time, put on our website, put in newsletters to our donors. All of that information was there. The purpose of stealing our documents was very specific. It was to expose our donors, mm -hmm. and it was uh, to, to create a fraudulent narrative about why we do what we do. Okay. Uh, that's very different from the climate gate situation. Okay, we're gonna have to leave it there. Thank you for joining us.